Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Between the Sharks. Here we are back at the ranch, ready to do our first ever Will It Run. But but not that, not that one. Uh, we're gonna try this one, or uh, maybe that one. Here's the situation, gang. Spring is springing here, and the grass is sneaking up on just about knee high out here, and well, it's a little over an acre, and for me, that's huge. That is huge. Now, as you saw before, this property is the biggest project I have ever gotten myself into. And in order to handle any of it, uh, the right tools are going to be in order. That is for sure. So the concern here is if we let this turn into the full blown southeastern jungle that it is trying to turn itself into, well, boy, howdy, I'll tell you what, we're going to have full jungle sized mosquitoes and that's going to make everything terrible. Now I have no idea what I'm doing with small engines, but if you look behind me, the guy who abandoned these things may have known a thing or two about it. So the good news is there's a lot of parts laying around here. The bad news is everything they left behind may be parts vehicles, parts mowers, parts junk. Junk is what I'm saying. So when I first scoped out the property, took a look before I purchased it, there was one much nicer mower in here, which was removed before the sale, which leads me to believe that these may be total junk. So what I don't know is if these two mowers were left in here because they were needing repair and that's why they were brought here, or if these were two working ones, or I don't even know if they have engines in them. In fact, I have not gotten that far. What I do know is that they're Murray lawn mowers. And what that means is, well, they're at least 20 years old because they stopped making Murray's in 2005 or something like that. At least that's what the internet said. So, all right, so 15 horsepower, overhead valve, automatic drive, something, something, Murray Ultra. Over here, Murray, 12 horsepower, 38 inch drive. So I think this is the one that we wanna to try to get going if we can, you know. This one looks a little more worser for wear, but I don't know what I'm doing. Let's see if this one has an engine in it. Before long, you're gonna notice these sons of the guns in the background, and yep, we bought some tiny heavy equipment. For us, this is like, you know, leaps and bounds up from our regular pickaxe and shovel duty. But we bought this mini excavator and this little dingo knockoff thing. Both the Chinese gas-powered ones you see all over YouTube. Uh, I bought these at Ritchie Brothers because the auction was timed right, and I just had to jump on it. Got a pretty good deal on this. They're all over YouTube, like I said, but if you're interested, I will tell you everything I know about them, what I paid for them, how I got them, that whole process. And uh, I really got to learn to use them. I have, I drove them off the trailer, which I learned to do on the trailer, and uh, got them back here. So there's a lot to learn, there's a lot to inspect, there's a lot to like figure out, but I think they're really going to come in handy. Well, that's why, that's why I peeled off the coin to buy them. Anyway, next thing to come in handy, those mowers way back behind this brand new expensive equipment and all the equipment I can afford right now. So I really hope one of these works. All right, well, let's just uh, move this pile to a different pile. Do we have an engine? No whammies. Yeah, we do. This is a Briggs and Stratton. Commercial performance, 15 horsepower. What does that have to say? Okay. Don't know what that has to say, but maybe this is a maintenance sticker. Here's a clue, the air cleaner is off. But is it, not that I know what I'm looking at, just trying to see if it's complete-ish looking. I don't see anything, I don't see anything really missing right now that is except a key. There's no key, no key. It's all right, I think we can get around lawnmower wiring um oh interesting that looks like a modification done to change the oil which is you know encouraging that somebody once changed the oil which is something i'm really bad about doing on all my vehicles all right well hmm. Hmm. so i rooted around my hot rod hoarding stash and found this old lawnmower key i think i kept it because i didn't know what it was until i was doing some research last night and viola 
here we go. I bought a battery at the O'Reilly's, put my tire pumper upper, and then I have one of those El Cheapo Harbor Freight $40 tool kits because that's what I take on the road. So we're gonna see if we can work it all out. Well, the key works. So I think we may have just peaked too early in our success. Let's see what we got going on here. All right, we got a battery. Is that missing? I feel like it should have springs or something that keep it from sitting on the battery terminals. Well, it doesn't look terrible. Interesting, maybe that's where the solenoid is. There's a switch that used to be in the seat here that doesn't appear to be attached to anything. That is one thing I am aware of on lawnmowers is there's a bunch of safety switches to get the regular person from like mulching themselves essentially. And I expect to see a lot of problems there if this motor is good and if this hydrostatic drive system is good, which I know even less about. I found what seems to be the, that goes in here. That's the other half of the switch. That's the appropriate sound for that. These wires are tore up and I can see down in there, one goes to ground and one goes off into the universe. So that makes me think I can probably bypass this switch by just connecting side A to side B and that will be as if it connect, connected, maybe? You know, that's first part of the plan. Next part of the plan is, I don't have a plan. Mm -hmm. Here is what we're working with, gang. This is the uber cheap, uh, I think $44 Harbor Freight toolkit that I bought to go on power tour. Now I try to keep one of these in every one of my cars. Honestly, never open the thing. So hopefully it's got what we need Cheap metric, cheap standard, widgets and doohickeys and stuff. Let's go ahead and check the oil now, I guess. And then we'll see what happens if we just turn the key. Cause you know, motor may spin, motor may not spin. All right, she's got Earl in her. Looks a little full, like over full, but you know, it's fine. Let's get this battery in using this El Cheapo toolkit. All right, gang, got the battery out. Um, the ground goes straight to the body, the chassis, the whole thing. So if this ground isn't good, then we're not getting anywhere. You know what I'm saying? So uh, we're going to clean that up first. And fortunately enough, I just tripped over this free wire brush. Jackpot. You may notice my gloves. I'm not usually good about gloves in the shop, but we are in Black Widow country. And gang, let me tell you what. Black Widows want nothing to do with me just like I want nothing to do with them. In fact, I ruined their day a lot more than they ruined mine because they love like hidey places. They want nothing to do with people. So they go to places where there's no people until we show up there and go, hey, my battery cable's there. All right, I took some paint off. That was definitely a painted surface. I feel like this is supposed to be the grounding bolt, but it's just spinning and I got to get under there and a lot of stuff. So basically, I feel like we got a long ways to go before we're worried about that. We will check continuity between our ground and like the engine or something to make sure that we're a-okay. Uh, but I think we're good enough for now. Hell, let's go check, let's just check it. Uh, yeah. Give it the old brake clean once over. Oh, that's erasing that, that's a bummer. Our reverse is pushing this backwards. Neutral is off. Forward is that pedal, that's good. Whoops, my bad. All right, but I got the information I needed to know. Reverse, forward, neutral. So I don't know if there's a neutral safety switch or not. So that's kind of what I'm trying to figure out here is uh, so what's gonna keep us from starting this thing. Back here, I think I bypassed this seat safety switch, got the new battery and cleaned up the ground on that. I basically just put a connector where these wires were really torn up, I just clipped them, spliced them together. So hopefully there's a connector in there, like one of those cheap crimpy connectors. Hopefully that bypasses that one. I would expect like most other riding lawnmowers though, there's a safety switch with the blade, probably a safety switch on the brake. Um, all things that interrupt the power to the starter solenoid. So I don't even know, we'll find out. Now that I've melted that. <laughs> I guess, because I don't need to be seated in it, I should be able to step on the brake and try to turn the engine over at this point. 
and see if anything happens. Well, I guess I can turn on the lights, see if anything happens. Nothing cool, nothing at all. All right, I got the blade disengaged. I'm gonna step on the brake, hopefully. Blade disengaged, foot on the brake. Hopefully that one's disconnected. Sounded like it had compression. All right, I know it's got no fuel in it. Uh, so let's jam some fuel in it. All right, I poke my head down in here with a flashlight and uh, you know, it's not too bad in there. There is a little bit of kibble, but like compared to how these gas tanks can be, it's, uh, it's pretty good. So we're not gonna go nuts with it. I think that ought to be plenty to see if it'll bark off. I also found the starting fluid on the ground, which is either fortuitous or a very bad sign. Considering the many thousands of dollars of equipment on that end of this garage, gotta make sure a fire extinguisher is standing by before we try this razzmatazz once more. All right guys, the throttle thing seems to be pretty loose. I can get it on choke. I can see fuel in the filter, which is pretty gross. Maybe we'll just, uh, maybe we'll just try it. Why not, right? It's here. Let's see if that'll make it bark a little bit. Whoa! All right. Let's, uh... Come on now. to live gang it wants to live all right gang I feel like we're getting into the carburetor now if I give it this business it'll keep business in so let's take a dive here so this looks pretty gross right here. I'm gonna try to clean it off with some brake clean. Uh, I don't know anything about anything, but in my little pressure washer, when that bowl gets full of turd, uh, the jet gets clogged and then nothing happens. The jets are out, that's pretty cool. Uh, there's some electronic medoodler in here, which I feel like shuts off the fuel. I have no idea if it's working. I guess I can spray some brake clean up in there out whatever's in there maybe drop some fuel in through the top but no fuel is coming out of the bowl really so yeah I guess that that plunger is supposed to be controlled by this 12 volt source which I don't know, may or may not be working which it's interesting because it's getting Got fuel to here. So I gave that poodle snapper a quick test with the old battery and it did actually solenoid operate. So assuming this gets power, that'll be working. But I popped the little cap off and I could see why there might be a bit of a issue, you know, getting fuel into the machine. Let the brake clean fix off. I don't know where the jet is on this thing. I think we're gonna need to find it based on what we just saw in there. As I've said, I don't know what I'm doing. So I'm gonna see if I can get fuel to run through with the bowl off, because the float's down, and that should happen. So I popped the fuel line. It actually looks kind of gross. So we're gonna pour out that. All right, there we go, we're flowing. Jam that back in there. Gravity ought to be, you know, getting us through there. I wonder what that's all about. I wonder if the needle's stuck. So if you haven't noticed, we're working on the Murphy's Law approach here, gang. 
thought was if I moved everything out and dragged this thing to the end of the garage where there's light and space, she'd never work. And then I'd have to drag her back. So I'm hoping that, you know, by not doing that, I'm encouraging the universe to, you know, help me out here. Okay, that's not sending any juice through. Let's figure out what that's all about. All right, gang, I don't know the extent of our problems, but I will say that the needle has seized itself inside the carburetor. So if we can break that free, then we can find the next problem, you know? Not gonna lie to you, gang, I feel like we're sunk here. Got the carburetor off and everything, and as far as I can fathom, you know, the needle is right here in the seat, and it is stuck. I've tried blowing through it, tried filling it with Marvel Mystery Oil, tried all the stuff I can think of, and she's jammed in there. I guess I can take it to the other shop, blow some compressed air through it, and see if that fires it out, but boy howdy, she's stuck. Great googly moogly, man. So the needle was seized, super seized. Put 150 PSI to it, nada. So I ended up having to drill it out. So that thing is gone. I'm gonna do a quick glance around here and see if there's any carburetors worth taking apart. See if we can get that. Cause now we can get fuel through, but it's gonna give it all the fuel. All the time, 100%. Also not what we need. And I've checked, internets, everything. Nobody local has anything, gang. Well, gang, considering this thing's down for the count right now, we need a carburetor needle to make that thingamadoodle work. What about, what about trying this one? Let's just do the basics. She's got Earl, all right. No fuel, no key, bug light. I'm seeing belts sitting all over this one. Like this belt, right, John? Something tells me that's not a good sign. Snap on tools. All right. A bunch of ratcheting screw tips. I can use those if I don't lose them. That's the thing about this, right? There's got to be one more parts in here. If a guy could just find it, you know? If a guy could find anything. Anyway, what's under door number one? It's got its drive belts and stuff in there. I think the belt's off the blade of a doodle thing deck down there. But let's uh let's just give it hell. Well let's let's pop the bowl off and see what's in there. See what's in, in that thing. Okay. She's just bone dry. Appears to be the same kind of needle and seat though. So maybe we'll give this a whirl, see what happens. If it goes poorly, maybe we'll borrow, borrow some parts. Gang, it is amazing how fast the day goes when you're getting nothing done. Like, man, oh man, nothing to show for a Saturday as of right now. Although I guess we did get that other one to bark off. All it needs is a carburetor. You just, you know, can't really get parts from stores, like as you used to. Probably gotta go on eBay. I prefer not to order from Mr. Bezos. Just, just don't, just don't. So we'll throw some gas in this thing and see if we get lucky. Be fun irony to have spent most of our day on the dud because it had the bigger motor. It did look a little bit more complete. All right, we got nothing at all in the fuel tank on that one. So I guess we gotta see if she'll turn over. Attached to. Gang, I had the blade engaged. That'll shut you down every time. Holy smokes. She's turning over. All right, let's get some fuel in there. See if she'll bark off. What are we what are the odds? Slim to none? Fuel filter filled right up. Took the air cleaner off. Figure. Give it a whirl of that starting fluid. Keep the fire extinguisher right nearby. That choked.
switch works. Fascinating gang. Gang, that took off two seconds. Jam the battery in, put fuel in it. Little ether, kaboom. So, now, let's see if I can get the tires filled up. See if they'll hold air at all. Get this cleaned up a little bit. We'll see if she drives at all, cause she runs, man. Holy Moses. I'm pretty excited about that, not gonna lie to you. You may not believe this, but three of the tires are kind of holding air. Now, they have massive cracks in there, so it's moments, but, but still, I'm impressed. Trying not to stick to the seat permanently, you know what I'm saying here? Man, <laughs> I'm elated with a little bit of success, but I need this thing to work. She's down. She's gross. She's all mine. I wonder if this thing will go into gear, you know? Hey. This poor old thing just drove itself out of here. I mean, it dragged a tire the whole way, you know? But uh, that's <laughs> significantly better than the thought she would do. Uh, the brake clutch system isn't working at all. So I'm gonna see if I can get it jacked up and figure out what's how that's supposed to work. Because as soon as I dropped her into reverse, man, she boogied, she wanted to go. Dang, that thing's leaking fast, but it filled up. Don't know why, so I guess the brake's not working. I know that much. So I guess that's okay. I don't know. Maybe it's not. Hell, I don't know how it should even work. Let's try this thing once again and see if the blade engages. Hiya! But I feel like it was cooking. So I don't know if they're seized up or what. Don't know. Don't know. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's hosed. 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 All right. Well. Well, well, so I can feel the blade hitting the side of the contraption here and I can see that this pulley is, you know, like that. So that's not good. Well, fellas, there's a couple mower decks over here, but I don't know nothing about mower decks and boy, it seems like a hassle. But who knows? Maybe they're in great shape, but eyeballing it, the carburetors look extremely similar. So, I wonder if I can swap one for the other, see what happens. Because right now, that mower deck is a long, long way from cutting any grass. But, you know, the machine runs. These carburetors actually look close enough to me, so I'm gonna go ahead and jam this one off, see if I can get it on the other machine. I don't know if the other machine's any better or even drives for that matter, but we're gonna see if we can make it do. That mower deck, you know, it just seems like it's in really, really rough shape. This one, it's still back here in the weeds, so 
I don't know what we got going on yet. Guess we'll find out. I mean, this whole drive system might not work. Uh, fellers, these bits and bobs are kind of going together, which is blowing my mind a little bit. I feel like a regular old sling blade right now. Now, if this works, these wheels and tires are in bad shape, but we'll give it a whirl, same as we did the other one. And if it actually happens to do more tricks, then be worth investing in more tricks, meaning like spin blades and stuff. It may be worth actually investing in a new set of tires. I've done that before on Stacy's mower during the pandemic, and those tires cost about as much as a set of car tires back in those days. But the guy had to do what a guy had to do. You guys remember that? It's gotten a little better since then. A little better every day, right? Grab the air filter, battery. Let's try this thing, right? Right, right. All right, so phase one, we're gonna test to see if this carbo ration machine can run a 15 horse engine, because it came off 12 horse. I don't know what I'm doing, so I'm making, making it up, you know? Here we go. think so but maybe well gang three out of four gang but i don't think this one is gonna come around she's uh plumb off the rim so i'm gonna see if i can limp her out on three wheels same as the other one that'll be fun sure why not gang I guess that's how it goes sometimes so we've got two runners well one runner because we're sharing a carburetor here uh, but this one doesn't want to drive and it has this weird automatic transmission system that I know nothing about at all nothing at all so well fellers as you can imagine it was just gnawing at me you know there was one more mower sitting right out here kind of looks like it's in semi okay shape and I thought to myself well maybe those other two were in the garage for repair and this was the workhorse out here you know so that push mower while Frankenstein wheels and all seems like it's the best of the bunch anyway I checked the oil on it it's got good oil Let's see if I can fill up the tires a little bit. We're going to add gas, put our fresh battery in it, and just see if it'll bark off. Who knows? Who knows? All right, battery's in. Same old story, gang. We're going to see if she'll spin over. If so, we'll add some fuel and just see what happens. I guess we need the brake. All right, clutch brake. Neutral. Blades off. Nothing. Nada. That tells me we got some troubleshooting to do. The steering's also not doing good. Why is that? Oh boy. <laughs> well, maybe that's why that one's parked. Balls. Guy just can't leave well enough alone. Drug this thing out by hand instead of using my machineries. Just, whew, here it is. And I found out that the drive belt is off the drive belt medoodle. So I reckon that would cause some issues. Uh, don't know if that's the only issue, but definitely an issue. Don't know how to get it back on, but I'm gonna do it one way or another. If it works, is it actually dumb? Well, friends and countrymen, we got that back on. 
got the tire back on. She's down. We could try the starter fluid trick, but I don't have adult supervision right now, so it's probably a bad idea. But I got it up on a jack. Let's see if she'll uh, spin the wheels this time. Wheels are spinning, but engaging the blade is killing it, and I don't know why. Let's see if we can take another look. All right, so I'm messing with it. It's feeling, gang, like electrical, like it's the kill switch that keeps you from starting the blade when it's engaged. That's what it seems to be doing. So I gotta find that switch and then see if we can, not that I wanna bypass it, but I'm gonna, you know, bypass it. I found it. It's way deep in there, but I'm gonna try the electrical tapo magic to uh, prove my theory. Well, I got a zip tie on it. I don't think it'll hold. That's unfortunately one of the safety features I agree with, but let's just see. Yeah, that seems to be it. Will it run? Yes, indeed. Will it work? I don't know. I mean, maybe. Like, we need to invest in some tires, you know? But I think it's worthwhile now to invest in some tires. I wonder if I can snatch those guys off. Because they're kind of holding air. And it's becoming a parts mower real fast. Uh, these front tires, they'll hold air for like 20 minutes, maybe. They're down now. But uh, let's see, I mean, it's really not that hard. It's just a, make no mistake, brothers. Whoa, we are racing the sun. I'm going ahead and changing both back tires to two very dry rotten back tires that kind of hold air mostly because well i am afraid of cheesing this transmission because it kind of works right now trans transaxle trans you know the thing that spins the wheels Dang, I think this is why everything's always a mess. I am working down to the last second. If this works at all, I'm gonna leave the tools right where they are. Deal with it later. And that's how everything becomes a disaster. Like, do you guys actually quit at a reasonable time to clean up? Because I sure don't. All right, gang, this took right about all day. Let's see if we can get this thing to do a little work before the sun goes completely down. Here goes nothing. Well, gang sun is still going and look what this thing has done already not so bad 
I had to park it here for a second. Look at that. Look at that. Anyway, I parked it for a second because I'm I'm seeing some death holes here. I don't know what's going on. I was gonna move this branch, you see. Well, I think I oughta, I oughta. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what that's all about. There seems to be another one right here. So, I guess we just gotta watch out for what's what lies beneath, you know? Just wanna say thank you guys for watching Between the Sharks. Good luck on your projects out there. Not so bad for our first Will It Run. I mean, granted, it's a lawnmower and it took all day, but she's working now, like, and working. So, uh, I'm satisfied. I was pretty frustrated a couple hours ago, but now we're cooking with peanut oil and uh, I'm stoked about it. So anyway, good luck on your projects out there. We will see you next time.